Hope you're having an amazing day. Today I have something very exciting. I got here the EK Quantum Vector 2 FE for the RTX 4090 water block. And uh, let me tell you, there's a huge difference in uh, cooling. We're gonna take a look at that uh, shortly. So one thing we kind of see here, if I had to mount this, uh, I would have had to realign everything from the tubing to everything else here. Uh, so this, uh, there's a huge size difference as you can see here. Uh, definitely, it's thicker, longer, and uh, this thing is heavy for sure. So mounting this uh, water block, it, it worked out perfectly for this uh, build. So in this video, we're gonna primarily focus on the cooling aspect here. We're just gonna see the big difference here between the stock cooler and the water block. If there's a difference, uh, spoilers, there is. Obviously there's gonna be performance gains as well at the lower temperatures, you're gonna be able to overclock and all that. Uh, but on this uh, video, we're primarily focused more on the temperatures here. So before we proceed to the benchmarks, uh, one thing you probably notice is the ugly cabling here. Um, obviously with all the melting and all those things that have been going around, um, haven't had zero issues with that. What they're saying is you have to go ahead and plug this all the way in. So making sure that's all the way plugged in correctly. And uh, one other thing is I do have the Dark Power Pro uh, from Be Quiet and I am getting the cable so I am getting that 12 VH PWR adapter. So it, it's definitely gonna look way nicer and sleeker here for sure. Uh, so right now the cabling that you see here is uh, kind of temporary. So now we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the actual temperatures here. And uh, on idle, we're gonna go ahead and check the GPU temperature, also the hotspot as well. So looking at the temperatures here on the stock RTX 4090 FE, we're getting around 31 Celsius. While on the water block here, we're getting around uh, 29 Celsius. So that's nothing to brag about. And then uh, looking at the hotspot, uh, 38 on the stock, while on the water block, we're getting around uh, 35 Celsius. So that's a difference of three there. But the main thing you probably came from here to see is like the stress test and some gaming performance tests. So right now we're gonna go ahead and look at the Furmark stress test and the stock, we got 68 Celsius. And well, on the water block, 54. Like, that's a huge difference. So that's a 14 degree difference there. So just that alone, uh, if you're gonna be playing high-end games or even doing some rendering, uh, definitely, definitely a big difference uh, having this water block there. While still on the stress test portion, we got 78 Celsius on the hotspot. While on the water block, we got uh, 63 Celsius. So that's another, like, 15 degree difference there as well. So we're getting like, if the card is running all the way to the max pretty much, we're getting around like 15 degree difference there. So it's a, it's a big, big difference there comparing the liquid and the stock air cooled there. Looking at the superposition benchmark, I ran it at 4K optimized and got 62 Celsius on this. Uh, on the stock one, while on the water block, we got 52 Celsius. So that's a minus a 10 degree difference there. While on the hotspot, it was going up to 70 with a stock cooler and the water block up to 60. So that's a minus 10 again. So now we're gonna look at the gaming portion side of things a little bit, uh, just so you can see the differences, uh, because obviously when you're gaming, this thing is not gonna run at 100% or 90, it's gonna be way less. So looking at the Shadow of the Tomb Raider at 1440p, no upscaling. Uh, on the stock one, I got 59 Celsius, while on the water block, 51. So that's a minus eight there. Uh, the next one, looking at the Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, 1440p, no upscaling, 49 Celsius, and while on the uh, water block, we got 38. So that's a minus 11. And just uh, to keep in mind, uh, like Call of Duty, Tomb Raider, I ran those at uh, the max settings. And this thing was not being utilized uh, that much either, uh, which is uh, pretty good. So uh, one thing is, if you're getting this, just go ahead and play games. And if you're able to fit this in your case, uh, there's really not, there's definitely a difference. Like we saw there, minus 11, minus eight, those are like pretty big numbers there for sure. But this card doesn't really get too hot. Even like on the stress test, it stays uh, pretty cool, which is uh, surprising to see. Uh, one thing I did notice is that on the stock cooler, uh, 
when this thing starts getting hot, it kind of like the air, the hot air kind of is coming out this way. And it does tend to get the cable hot here with all the melting problems that that's happening to some people. So that's just gonna increase those uh, chances going up there. But with this, that's uh, definitely no problem at all. So right now it's like very cool to touch and everything else. Even the whole card, like when you're touching the card here, it stays pretty cool. But with this, definitely you could feel the heat coming out. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and show you some of the thermal imaging that I took of the stock RTX 4090 FE while also using the EK Quantum Vector 2 here so you can see kind of the differences on the stress test how like hot the whole uh, card gets here and uh, also you can see the differences here so looking at the thermals there you can definitely see a difference on a stress test uh, the whole card heating up the heat and everything even the cable tends to stay cooler here on the water block and uh, the whole thing just works and looks much better I think and the thing is it doesn't take much room like comparing this it's like look at this it's like taking the whole space here uh, it's definitely if you have a like a small case you're you're like really not putting this in there it's gonna take the whole uh, area there so when we're looking to put the whole thing together here to switch from the stock cooler to the EK uh, water block here uh, definitely you want to put a few hours aside because uh, you're definitely gonna have to do some uh, cutting of the thermal pads and uh, place them quite a bit in the front there's uh, quite a few of them and also uh, the back as well as we see here there's definitely uh, you're gonna have to spend some time doing this but in the end it's uh, definitely worth it for sure so the overall conclusion, uh, is this worth it? Uh, definitely if you have the cash to buy this, probably you have the cash to get the water block and I would definitely recommend getting the water block because you can see the big difference there. If you're using this like for some uh, like 3D rendering or anything like that, it definitely performs much better with the water block here. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and put all the specs of this PC on the description just so I don't bore you up with all those details now so you can see those for yourself. But uh, once I get my Be Quiet uh, nice looking cable here, I think the whole build will definitely look much nicer and uh, it does perform great. Uh, so right now I'm really able to run any game at max settings without the need to worry about uh, upscaling or anything like that. Obviously, if you want higher frame rates, upscaling is gonna work better. Um, right now, I use this on a 2K monitor, planning to get a 4K, but that's not gonna really be an issue at all. Like, it's gonna be able to handle some, uh, like, gaming at 4K as well. So I definitely have some more video ideas, uh, with including this build here, so stay tuned. I only got the EK Quantum Vector 2 uh, front cooling here. There is also the option of getting the back active cooling. Um, it would definitely help out the temperatures, but with the looking at the actual card here, it doesn't really get too hot as my other previous uh, cards did. So I don't see really the point of getting the active back cooling. There's That's an option. If you have the cash to buy that, go right ahead, but it will definitely help out a bit, but I don't see the big big difference there really hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions about this uh, ek quantum vector 2 uh go ahead and leave a comment below i'll be more than happy to answer it otherwise uh, stay tuned for more videos i'll see you next time